Hey everyone, Shark here, and I'm bringing you the second part of our Teapot Video Guide series. A lot of people really liked part one, especially all of the tips, tricks, and strategies to max out your teapot as quick as possible. In that video, we focused on a lot of the free materials you can get, including Hero's Wits, Mora, Enhancement Ore, Free Resin, and so forth, but now we're really dialing it in. This video is going to focus on a lot more of the free items you can get, in particular a lot of free Primo Gems and Mora. Just how many Primos and how much Mora you might be wondering? Well, it's a lot more than you think. Almost enough Primo gems for a 10 pull and quite a lot of Mora as well. So if this is the kind of thing you like, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell if you haven't done so already. And let's get into it. Now the first guide was all about maxing out your teapot and getting the good items as soon as possible. But this guide is going to focus on the free Primo gems, free character ascension materials, free friendship, name cards, and much more. So if you haven't watched that video first, I'd recommend going and checking it out so you can have a good grasp on how to max out your Serenity teapot the fastest way possible first. If you want to check out that video, the link will be in the description description and there'll also be a little card in the corner on the screen. But if you've already seen that video then you're ready for this one so let's dive on in. So the first thing we'll talk about is gardening in the Serenity Pot or Stardew Valley Impact. Except way 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 simpler. And the reason you want to start gardening is because it gives you a lot of different plants and materials, a lot of which can be used to help ascend characters such as Kingshin, Violet Grass, Windwheel Aster, Glaze Lily, Cecilia, Julian Chili, and Valberries. So if you needed some extra silk flowers to ascend your Sing Cho or Windmill Aster to ascend your Traveler or Glaze Lilies for Ning Guang or Joy and Chilies to ascend Zhang Ling, the teapot is a really good way to get these extra resources. And the gardening feature might be something you're aware of in the Serena teapot already, but not sure how to start. So let me help you with that because it can be a little bit tricky. And there's two ways to start gardening. One way uses realm coins and the other does not, but requires a special quest that you may not be aware of. We'll go for the easy one first that costs realm coins and for this all you have to do is go down and visit tubby in your serena teapot simply talk to tubby then go into the realm depot and down to the option called riches of the realm here you can buy little plots of land for your farming adventure if you scroll down in the description at the bottom, you can see which plants are available to be planted here. Each one of these planters has four spaces or four mini plots for a specific plant, which means that you can plant up to four things per each of these furnishings. Now you can buy two of the Jade Field, the Orderly Meadow, but you can only buy one of the Luxuriant Glebe, and that's because the other one comes from a special quest. And we'll talk more about that later, but for those of you who just want to start gardening right away, let's talk about how to get started once you get these plots of land. Once you have the plots, you're going to need something to plant in them. So go to the tab right under Riches of the Realm in the Realm Depot section called Creatures of the Realm. This is a very weird title because here you're just buying a bunch of seeds and you need the seeds to put into the planters so that plants can grow. Each seed bag contains a single seed of that plant and you can buy up to five of them per week. So to actually get started gardening, all you have to do is take the plots of land that you got, place them down on the outside of your teapot because we can't do any gardening indoors yet, at least maybe in the future. And once you've placed these gardening areas down, you simply walk over to them and then click and place the seeds that you want to grow. Now remember, you can buy five plots of land at the start, and each one of these gardening furnishings has four spaces to grow individual plants. So five plots times four spaces each means there's 20 spaces for plants, but we can only buy five seeds of a given type per week. And remember, the planters will only work with specific seeds. And with each plant sprouting after a couple days, you might find yourself needing a lot more seeds than tubby cells. And that's where gardening part two comes in. This is a way for you to unlock a special item for you to get seeds without using any realm coins and it's also a way to get the final planter the second luxurious glebe for free. And in order to get these goodies, you need to reach Inazuma Reputation Rank 3. Unfortunately, the Inazuma Reputation System is not unlocked immediately. To unlock the Reputation System in Inazuma, all you have to do is complete the Archon Quest Chapter 2 Act 1, which is the first part of the Inazuma storyline. Once you've done that, head to this NPC named Matarame Hyakube in the Kamisato Estate. You'll have to do some world quests to increase your initial reputation, but after that you can take on some bounties and requests and get a lot of reputation a lot faster. An important thing to note is that unless you grind Inazuma exploration or specific reputation related world quests, 
Reaching Inazuma Reputation Rank 3 can take a couple of weeks, but once you do reach Reputation Rank 3, go to Madarame Hyakube, and then you'll get a special bag of Nakuweed Seeds. These seeds are extra dank because they're actually a quest item. Once you get this item, simply talk to Madarame Hyakube again, and then he'll have you go talk to Madame Ping. Teleport over to Liwei to see her, and she will give you a seed dispensary box. This is an item you can equip, and it's a really good idea to equip this if you don't have any specific item that you're using at the time. What this allows you to do is collect the seeds for any of the flora that you can plant in the Serenity Pot. Each item you gather gives you one seed with a maximum of 20 seeds per plant. Now a good thing to note about gathering is when you go over a plant that has multiple items on it, like silk flowers, valberries, or joyum chilies, each individual item you loot will give you a seed, which means that you could go to a single silk flower plant and get two silk flower seeds. Likewise, you could go to a single valberry or joyun chili plant and get multiple seeds as well. And this is important because it's going to be a way for us to unlock a few achievements for some easy primo gems. Now if we go in the achievements section and look at gardening, we'll notice that there's achievements for harvesting several hundred plants from each of the different plots. To get the maximum reward, you need to harvest 800 plants from each of the three different types of planters. And that might seem like it'll take forever, but let me give you a tip to speed it up. When a plant matures and is ready to be harvested in the teapot, it produces the same number of items as that plant in the overworld, meaning that a single silk flower seed will actually yield two silk flowers. We can use this knowledge to get the achievements a lot faster by planting valberries, joyun chilies, zaytun peaches, and silk flowers. Unfortunately, the luxuriant glebe, the water plot, does not have any plants that yield multiples, so you're gonna have to harvest that one individually. That one will take the longest. So if I had to do the gardening quest all over, I would start by first buying all the different plots of land I could, buying enough seeds to plant them initially, and then I would start grinding the Inazuma reputation so I could get the seed dispensary for free. After that point, I'd never have to buy any seeds from Tubby again because I could just gather them for free in the overworld, and then I'd have to make a call looking at the various ascension materials I might need for certain characters, or if I wanted to get that achievement faster, and figure out which is more important to me. Generally, I'd prioritize the character ascension materials over a few primo gems I could get, but depending on where you're at in your account, you might want to do it the other way around. Now that we've covered gardening, let's move on to gift sets, and this is something that's probably the most slept on of everything in the Serena Teapot as it gives you a ton of Primo Gems and Mora. To get started with gift sets, you need a few things, a special blueprint that you buy from Tubby, a lot of different types of furnishings, and some specific characters. So to start using gift sets and get a bunch of Primo Gems and Mora and character ascension materials, you're going to first want to go to Tubby. Go to the Realm Depot and click on Furnishing Blueprints. Here you'll see some special 4-star furnishing blueprints that are a complete set. And if you scroll down, you'll notice they name several characters. What this means is that if you craft this special set and place those characters in that set, you get 20 Primo Gems, 20,000 Mora, and either Elemental Fragments or Talent Books for every one of those specific characters you place down. Now if you had all of the 4 star and 5 star characters listed in each one of these specific sets, you could get over 1400 Primo Gems, 1.4 million Mora, plus a bunch of other character ascension and development stuff. Now here's a big tip to get the maximum amount of Primo Gems from the system. And the secret is, you don't actually need all of the characters listed to get the Primo Gems. Knowing that, the best strategy to get the most amount of Primo Gems as fast as possible is to simply buy the blueprints that have the most amount of characters that correspond to the characters that you have on your account. For example, if I were to buy the glue Glittering Street Blueprints, the favored characters are Jingqiu, Yanfei, Ningguang, Kaching, Zhongli, Yunjin, and Shenha. Of those characters, the only one I don't have is Shenha. So, from that blueprint, I could get 120 Primo Gems and 120,000 Mora, plus a bunch of talent books and ascension materials. And this is just one blueprint, there's quite a lot, and with new Sumeru characters coming up, there's going to be even more introduced in the future. So to take advantage of the system, you first have to purchase the blueprint, and then it's going to tell you what items are needed. Now most of the items for the gift sets you're going to need to craft, which is why it's important to get your teapot up to the maximum level first. 
You're going to need a lot of realm coins to do this, and I didn't want people doing too many things at once, so I included it in this video instead of the previous one. But we'll already assume that you've efficiently and quickly maximized your teapot so you're ready to move on to this system. So once you've bought the gift set blueprint, it's time to start crafting the furnishings you need. Purchase any of those furnishing blueprints you need in the Realm Depot furnishing blueprint store. But keep in mind you probably already have a lot of these furnishings from the advice we gave in the previous video. Remember to use your vials of adeptal speed to instantly craft the furnishings necessary. Also be aware that you're going to have to buy a lot of furnishings furnishings from the furnishing tab in the Realm Depot, these items are ones that you cannot craft and have to buy directly from Tubby. There is also a limit on how many of these non-craftable furnishings you can buy per week, so make sure to plan accordingly. Once you've got all the furnishings necessary to make a gift set, you simply place it down in an open area, then walk into the pre-built customized set and start inviting your characters. Talk to them and click on each of the highlighted options, and once you've heard each of the options they have, they'll move to a slightly different position in the gift set itself, and you can talk to them once more for 20 Primo Gems, 20,000 Mora, and either a couple talent books or character ascension materials. Simply invite all the other specific favored characters you have, and boom, you've got a bunch more free Primo Gems, Mora, and a lot of other goodies. Remember, you don't need every single character mentioned in these special gift sets in order to get the Primo Gems. You just need ones that have at least one character that you have. But it is better to get ones that have multiple of the characters you have, so you can get more Primos for the work that you're going to put in to make the gift set. And here's another big tip. Make sure to check back periodically after each of the version updates because sometimes there may be a new gift set for the new characters. And there also may be new characters added to old gift sets that you've already made so you can get more Primo Gems that way too. So we've covered the gardening system and the two ways to start it including one that most people probably don't know about, the gift set system and how to get tons of extra Primo Gems, Mora, character ascension materials, and talent books. And I want to move on to one quick and final thing which are achievements and character friendship. But real quick everyone, if this video has been helpful then make sure to hit the like and sub and turn on the bell notification if you haven't already. It's a completely free way to help out and I really appreciate it. And for your troubles, here's a picture of me dressed like Zhongli. Now on to the final part of the video. Now the first thing I want to go over are the achievements to get even more Primo Gems for free. Most of these are pretty straightforward and you'll get them over time. However, I did want to point out one called High Adeptal Energy Readings Ahead. This achievement requires you to reach 20,000 Adeptal Energy in three Realm layouts. Now that might seem like an extremely daunting task, but remember, the teapot shares the amount of furnishings in a single inventory. And since you've already followed the previous video guide, you're actually able to achieve this really easily. Simply take all of the furnishings you made in your first initial teapot, then switch realms and then just place them down there. Do that for three realms and bam, you're done. You can very simply take the items that you crafted for your first realm to achieve the maximum amount of adeptal energy, just place them down into other realms. Because placing a furnishing that you already have placed in one realm does not remove it from that previous realm. So this achievement that seems like it's very daunting on its face is actually pretty simple. And the final thing I want to talk about this video is friendship. So if you're the type of person who wants to show off with special unique name cards, this section is for you. Normally the only way to gain friendship experience is either through random events or spending resin, but in the teapot you can actually accumulate friendship points and give them to specific characters. All you have to do is place a character that you want to get friendship with in the teapot, and Tubby has a little friendship gift meter that accumulates over time. You don't need to wait for this to be full, in fact there's no advantage for clicking it early or clicking it when it is full. But but whenever you click on it, your character will gain a small amount of friendship experience which will get you ever closer to those special name cards. Now between this guide and the previous guide, we've covered a lot about the teapot, but there's actually even more. These two guides have covered the most important things when it comes to free items, Primo Gems, Mora, and all of that. However, the teapot is very customizable. And once you're ready, you can start making your own beautiful abode with customized music, customized decorations and buildings, and even customized minigames. If you'd like to know more about those beautifying aspects of the Serena teapot, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have a teapot that's really cozy or comfy or unique, then definitely show it off to us in Discord, we'd love to see it. The teapot was what I mainly 
focused on during the giant content drought when we had the extended patch with basically nothing happening. In that time, I really grew to appreciate all the work and effort that goes into designing these really cool teapots, so if you have one, we'd love to see it. Anyways, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys, stay awesome, and until next time, may order guide you, friends. Can't wait to see you in the next one.